Hi everyone, welcome back to Lifting the Lamp. And tonight I'm going to be talking about the Pistis Sophia and specifically the 13 repentances of the Sophia contained in that book. A book purporting to be the secret teachings of Jesus that he revealed only to his closest followers. Teachings which didn't make it into the mainstream New Testament narrative, but which tell a story of the soul's ascent through the various spheres of the heavens so that the human being can become something like a heavenly being and find salvation in that way rather than through the vicarious atonement through the crucifixion which is the normal story of salvation that we get in the four canonical gospels of the new testament so tonight i'm going to take you through the repentances as they are laid out in the Pista Sophia and what they mean for us today and, and how they might be used by seekers on the spiritual path today in order to help us win a truly esoteric form of salvation. So the Pista Sophia is an ancient text belonging to the Gnostic Christian tradition dating back to the third century of the Common Era and it was first unearthed again in the 1700s. And you might be familiar with some of the Gnostic Gospels, the, the hidden Gnostic Gospels that were unearthed among the Nag Hammadi texts, the Dead Sea Scrolls that were uncovered in recent history. And the Pista Sophia is a text in the same kind of category as those Gnostic Gospels it tells a very different story of who Jesus was and what his teachings were and what it was about his life and ministry that made him the savior. Uh, very different to what we find in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and indeed the writings of St. Paul. A lot of people look at how late the Gnostic texts were written and see that as an argument as to why maybe it's not as an authentic a story of who Jesus was as the canonical Gospels, which although they were written decades after the life of Christ, were written much later than these second, third century manuscripts. However, as some scholars have pointed out, there is some evidence to suggest that the Gnostic tradition is at least as old as what is today the Orthodox Christian tradition when we think about the way that for example uh, one of the earliest forms of gospel writing was in a the form of a list of sayings of Jesus and we see such a list in the Gospel of Thomas one of the Gnostic Gospels uh, but that is a that is a discussion for another time but let's look a bit more closely at the Pistis Sophia the Pista Sophia gives an alternative timeline of the events following the crucifixion of Jesus. According to the Pista Sophia, Jesus didn't go through the crucifixion and the resurrection only to be immediately swept up into heaven after spending a little bit more time with his apostles. According to the Pista Sophia, Jesus spent another 11 years on the earth teaching his apostles before finally ascending into heaven. Having delivered the more exoteric teachings that we're all familiar with today, in these final 11 years, Jesus instead passes on his esoteric teachings, his, his innermost mystical teachings to his very closest disciples. And that is the contents of the Pista Sophia. These are teachings which include a, a complex cosmology of different layers of the heavens, including the realm of the light in the very highest heavens, and then the earth, and then between that, uh, realms of the aeons, ruled by oppressive angels known as the archons, who want to keep the human soul trapped in matter, when in fact the divine destiny of each human soul is to ascend back up. It includes descriptions of realms of chaos and descriptions of 
different godlike beings emanating forth emanations from themselves from higher worlds into lower worlds it describes the process of baptism and repentance and receiving mysteries that will finally allow the soul to reascend up towards that heavenly realm and to escape the grip of the archons and in particular the sinister lion-faced power that is the demiurge or false god or god of the created universe and the latter part of the pistis sophia talks about different types of moral action and some of the supernatural chastisements that await the souls who undertake various forms of immoral action. Uh, similar to some later descriptions of hell, although the torment does not last an eternity, but lasts for a time uh, in order to purify the soul of its iniquity before that soul then has another opportunity to strive towards God. But the real focus of the Pis to Sophia is on the story of Sophia, the spiritual being who falls from grace and needs to find her way back to the light. Jesus tells the story of Sophia and the 13 repentances that she had to make in order to complete that return journey. With a little bit of help from Jesus himself, who plays the role of a kind of a rescuer during the redemption of Sophia. Uh, and in fact, we see at the beginning of the Pistis Sophia, Jesus actually ascends into heaven in a form of light and, and humbles the archonic angels in the lower heavens and actually makes a way that didn't exist before for souls to return back to the highest heaven to evade the surveilling eyes of the archons. And after having traveled to that place during his ascension, Jesus receives one final mystery and receives what is called the vestment of light, a new form of light, such as when Jesus appears in the transfiguration in the canonical gospels. And then in that form, he descends down and imparts the mysteries he had learnt to his disciples. And it is during that journey through the heavens that he encounters Sophia and, and helps to rescue her from the archons that are oppressing her as she's trying to repent and trying to make her way back to the light. So the story of Sophia, which is purportedly told by Jesus, is that there are... 12 aeons above the earth, which perhaps correspond to the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 starry heavens that rule the fate of human beings, for better or for worse, an apt metaphor for the oppression of the archons of the created world over the human soul that wants to be free. And then above these 12 aeons, there is a 13th aeon, which is not the highest heaven of the light, but it is a higher heaven than the 12 aeons below. And it is in this 13th aeon that Sophia, the spirit being, resides. Sophia is the embodiment of wisdom in the Gnostic tradition, and also seen by many as the feminine counterpart to the masculine principle of the Christ, uh, as, a, as a cosmic being, rather than as embodied in Jesus the man. But Sophia wants to go towards the light. She wants to strive towards the light of lights, but she is deceived. She is deceived by a false light that is placed there by the villain of the story of Sophia, uh, the Altades or self-willed, otherwise known as Yaldaboth, otherwise known as the Adamus, the tyrant, more commonly known by students of Gnosticism as the Demiurge, the false god of the created world. And this god, when he manifests himself into the lower worlds, uh, 
emanates forth the form of a lion-faced serpent, a fearsome, monstrous creature. And this Yaldabaoth, this Adamus, deceives Sophia into following a false light, which then causes her to tumble down, down through the lower 12 aeons and into the chaos. And as she falls, she is pursued by emanations of this self-willed deity uh, to be contrasted with, with the will that is in alignment with the universe, in alignment with God. And these monstrous emanations torment the Sophia as she is fallen. And so too do the archons which inhabit the twelve lower heavens that she has descended through to finally reach the chaos. And so Sophia finds herself oppressed by Yaldabaoth, by the Adamus. She finds herself oppressed by the twelve archons of the twelve aeons. And it is necessary for her to, to rise back up to the thirteenth aeon. And the way that she does this is through a series of repentances. And as she goes, Sophia calls upon the light of lights and she calls upon the angel Jehu, who is kind of like a kind of like a positive demiurge, a positive creator spirit which dwells in the higher heavens and is kind of like the beneficent orderer and structurer of creation. And one little bit of trivia that we get given about Jehu is that Jehu is the father of the spirit being Sabaoth the Good, who is in fact the father of Jesus. So Jehu is in fact Jesus' grandfather. And this is one of the spirits that Sophia calls upon. And the name Jehu appears later in the Pistis Sophia as well, but I'll get to that. But in the story of Sophia, in the end, Jesus rescues Sophia and restores her to her rightful place in the 13th Aeon and promises that for human beings who follow the path through the, that, he, that Jesus has cut through the proverbial jungle of the Archontic realms, uh, they too can, can rise to a divinely exalted state in what is described in the Pista Sophia as the treasury of light. Many Gnostics saw in the story of the fall and redemption of Sophia uh, a metaphor for the human soul, which is also, like Sophia, fallen and oppressed by the Archons after having been deceived into following a false light. And the soul is going through a process of ascension and redemption as it repents for all of the evil that has cloaked it as it has come under the influence of the archons, of the stars, of fate, of karma. And so like Sophia, we too, as our soul, must receive the initiations and the baptisms and the mysteries of the Christ, the esoteric mysteries, as well as the exoteric, so that our soul may ascend by the path that he has put forward and be saved thereby from the tyranny of the created universe. And an important part of that process, just as with the Sophia, is the process of repentance. Repenting for the evils that we have committed in the world, which keep us embroiled in the drama of the world. And as we progressively repent, our soul becomes lighter and can rise up towards the heavens. And there is a bit of a hidden structure in the repentances of the Sophia. That is because each of the 13 repentances corresponds to one of the Psalms of David. And we are told this explicitly because the story of the repentance of Sophia uh, in some parts takes the form of a Q&A between 
Jesus and his disciples, where Jesus tests his disciples by asking them to summarize a particular repentance of Sophia by referring to a particular psalm to which one of the disciples will respond with that particular psalm. And if you read many of these psalms side by side with the repentance, they're so similar that it almost reads as though the repentance is a paraphrase of the psalm. And so we can gain a bit of extra insight into what each of these 13 repentances might mean by looking at the significance or the symbolism of the particular apostle or disciple who answered the question of Jesus during that particular repentance and also by looking at the meaning of the particular psalm attributed to that repentance. Uh, but that's far too much information for an introductory video such as this. I may go into each individual repentance in more detail in subsequent videos and perhaps even do a performance of each of these repentances if that's something that, that people would enjoy. The other important bit of information that seems to complement the process of the 13 repentances is that of the so-called baptisms and the so-called mysteries, uh, which, which Jesus has revealed uh, as part of the, the knowledge that is necessary for the return journey to the heavens. And Jesus indicates in the Pista Sophia that the missing piece of the puzzle for, for the information that is needed for the ascension lies in the two books of Jehu, which contain a number of magical incantations uh, to, to gain passage through the different realms of the Archons, and c includes magic formulas and sigils and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Uh, so that combined with the process of repentance and the receiving of the mysterious three baptisms that Jesus refers to in the Pista Sophia are the key to the salvation of the soul, the key to the liberation of the spirit so that it may ascend back to heaven and become a spiritual being and be freed from the fetters of the created universe. That is the path to salvation that is set forth by the esoteric Jesus in the Pista Sophia. Uh, I actually think that, that the repentances are the key part of the process here. Uh, I don't think that waving a magic wand around or holding up a particular sigil or receiving a particular ceremonial initiation is anywhere near as important as the process of reflection and the process of the work on oneself that goes with the process of repentance, it's the only way to overcome karma and it's the only way to, to really change ourselves in the way that is necessary for us to become more spiritual beings. When we take on an attitude of repentance concerning certain types of actions that we have engaged in and continuously engage in, we acknowledge that there is something about us that we don't want to continue to be a part of our being and we make a, a commitment that we are going to ch change that and, and align instead with the more spiritual parts of our nature. And so once we have that spirit of repentance, we can really begin the process of reforming ourselves in earnest. And that, I think, is, is the key takeaway of the Pista Sophia and of the 13 repentances. And that is the thing that is the true key to salvation, not only of ourselves, saving ourselves from the burden of karma that we have upon us, but also ultimately saving the planet. Because if everybody changed the way that they act, if everybody repented of the sins that they continue to commit, and the patterns that they keep falling into, then the world itself would look very different. So the Pista Sophia uh, can be quite an obtuse text to try and study at times, but I think, you know, the, the repentances are well worth studying for, for, for deeper meaning and deeper understanding on the spiritual path. 
And there are people today who incorporate the 13 repentances into their own spiritual journey of self-development. And, and I think it's a good thing. And it gives us a glimpse into a side of Jesus that we don't see in the canonical Gospels, something which adds depth to our understanding of the, the life and the teachings of the Christ, a bit beyond what you get taught in catechism class. So that's it. That's my introductory video to the repentances of the Sophia. I hope that you found that interesting and insightful. Uh, if you did, please like the video uh, and subscribe to this channel to support my work. You can also subscribe to me on my Odyssey account to support me there. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next time.